still here. I would like to share with you an article from revealnews.org. It's an article by Aaron Sankin, and it's entitled, Where in the World is America's Leading Neo-Nazi Troll? Prominent American neo-Nazi Andrew Anglin has fled the United States for Lagos, Nigeria, or has he? In a post on his website entitled, Nigerians Love Neo-Nazi White Supremacist Andrew Anglin, he says he is receiving a warm welcome from the locals. Nigeria, he wrote, is a place where he could avoid being harassed by law enforcement and Antifa street enforcers. The announcement comes as Anglin faces a lawsuit that could destroy his site, the Daily Stormer, one of the most influential in the online white supremacist ecosystem. The Southern Poverty Law Center, which sued Anglin three months ago for harassing a Jewish family, hasn't been able to find him to serve him with the lawsuit. When a neo-Nazi website called for an army of trolls to go after a Jewish woman in Montana, the site's publisher, Andrew Anglin, got sued. It's the first big case against alt-right trolls and could draw a new line between what's considered protected free speech and what counts as illegal harassment. Mark Randazza is best known for representing the porn industry on First Amendment issues. You, you know where the shit place we ate at the other day was? It's right there. Now he's representing Andrew Anglin the founder of the neo-Nazi website, The Daily Stormer. Jews, it so happens, are behind absolutely every problem that we face as a society. Anglin is a prolific troll who combines classic white supremacy with the latest teenagers' memes. With a series of posts, he raised more than $150,000 for his legal defense. When reached by email, Anglin said that he really is in Nigeria, However, some clues left on his own website suggest that may simply be another act of trolling. Anglin first talked about living in Nigeria in an interview with CNN. He expanded on the experience in his own blog post. Quote, While the Jews say that every racist is pure evil and just blindly hates skin colors for no reason, I, in fact, get along with the Nigerians I live amongst here in Nigeria. In fact, they love me. The fact that the world's number one racist hater feels safest in a totally black country where pansy Antifa would pee their pants as soon as they got off the plane is something that should give even the densest liberal pause for thought." End quote. In one image he uses to prove he's in Nigeria, Anglin shares the Facebook post of a woman named Julian Natukunda wishing happy birthday to an Andrew Anglin. However, Natukunda's Facebook profile lists her location as Kampala, Uganda, which is about 3,000 miles away from Lagos, Nigeria. In a WhatsApp conversation, Natukunda told us Andrew Anglin is also her son's name. She said she has no idea who the American Andrew Anglin is or his current location. Anglin shared a series of other photos in his post to prove he's in Nigeria. One of them actually includes him. One is a generic photo of a residential street with cars parked on it. Another depicts meat kebabs at a food stand. In further evidence that Anglin is trolling, at the bottom of the post, Anglin features a video that he claims to be audio from an interview with BuzzFeed reporter named Willard Golden Steinbergen. When you click on the video, it plays a clip from the film Apocalypse Now. Willard Golden Steinbergen is not the name of a BuzzFeed employee and is an obvious parody of common Jewish surnames. Regardless of where Anglin is, there are reasons he would go on the lam. 
If successful, the lawsuit against him filed by the Southern Poverty Law Center on behalf of the Jewish family Anglin targeted for what he called a troll storm could set a new precedent in holding Internet trolls accountable for the emotional distress they cause. Whether or not I agree with somebody's content is irrelevant to whether I'll represent them. In fact, I find that I do better work when I don't agree with them. So you don't like his substance, but what do you think of his style? I don't have any judgment on that. His trolling. Look, there are people who crack me up with their trolling. All right, you know, tro troll level 100. I mean, some of the best trolls in the business are friends of mine. Mr. Anglin is uh, pretty run of the mill when it comes to trying to troll somebody. Anglin jumped into the fray of a small town dispute in Whitefish, Montana. A local realtor there named Tanya Gersh had sent an email to the mother of white nationalist Richard Spencer, urging her to condemn his views. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! Anglin took Spencer's side and urged his readers to participate in a troll storm against Gersh. She got hundreds of threatening anti-Semitic messages. The Southern Poverty Law Center filed suit on Gersh's behalf for intentional infliction of emotional distress, invasion of privacy, and intimidation. This is the call to action now, we say, right? Tanya Gersh, please call her and tell her what you think. And hey, if you're in the area, maybe you should stop by and tell her in person what you think of her actions. Daniel Citrin is a scholar who literally wrote the book on digital harassment. SPLC consulted with her on its original brief in the Anglin case. Gives her address gives her phone number. You can also leave a review of her business on Google and perhaps note it's a front for an extortion racket. I'm not seeing political speech here. Hate speech is protected by the First Amendment. Threats aren't. Court documents show the SPLC has been unable to locate England to serve him with the lawsuit. Defendants in lawsuits must be given notice that they've been sued so they know about the case and have the ability to defend themselves. The SPLC attempted to serve Anglin at a number of locations in Ohio, such as the address where the Daily Stormer is registered as a business and the address where the business's name was registered with Ohio's Secretary of State. A process server also visited the home of Anglin's brother and his father's psychiatric counseling service, according to the court documents. No one at the locations associated with Anglin's family accepted the papers. When a process server went to Anglin's brother's home, a man who did not give his name told the server that he can't do that to his brother. Neither Anglin's lawyer, Mark Randazza, nor representatives from his law firm responded to requests for comment. <laughs> Randazza made a name for himself defending the alt-right online message board 8chan and conservative media personality Mike Cernovich, who drew widespread criticism for promoting the Pizzagate conspiracy theory. Quote, If it's unpopular and people want to shut it up, then we have represented them, end quote, Randazza told the Associated Press. The SPLC says it has not been able to get Randazza to respond to its questions about the case in any way. However, Anglin is clearly aware of the case. In June, he wrote a story entitled, Andrew Anglin has retained America's number one First Amendment lawyer to represent him against SPLC and the banner running at the top of the Daily Stormer keeps a running tally of donations made to fund Anglin's legal defense. To date, he says he's raised more than $150,000. What Mr. Anglin and, and what the Daily Stormer does is First Amendment protected. Do you think he incited a mob to harass Tanya? For it to be incitement, speech has to call for imminent law lawless action. You ask a lot of people to speak, you're not causing imminent action. Tanya Gersh, as far as I see it, did not get unwillingly brought into this debate. Don't walk into that arena. 
if you don't want to get hit. The case comes at a time of increased concern about online harassment. Two-thirds of American adults have seen someone harassed online. And most American adults think law enforcement should do more about online harassment. What victims of online harassment are constantly told is just turn off your computer, which betrays this completely sort of backwards understanding about what social media means for us today. We're all connected to it all the time. But the law hasn't recognized that yet. If Anglin or his lawyer never show up to answer the charges, the plaintiffs have other options. SPLC can ask the court clerk in Ohio to place a notification in a local media outlet for six weeks as a means of effective notification. After that, the judge could allow the case to proceed without Anglin's direct participation or simply hand the SPLC the victory. Anthony Colangelo, a law professor at Southern Methodist University, said the judge can also seize England's assets. Quote, the entire point of the procedure is to see that justice is done and make sure defendants receive a fair hearing. When you have a defendant who is purposefully trying to avoid a lawsuit and plaintiffs are doing everything they can to vindicate their rights, courts are going to be sympathetic. The lawsuit against England was filed by Tanya Gersh, a real estate agent from Whitefish, Montana, targeted by the Daily Stormer. Whitefish is also the hometown of white nationalist Richard Spencer. When Spencer's mother became the focus of local anger as her son gained prominence in the Trump era, Gersh said she tried to help Spencer's mother sell her property. The deal went sour, and Spencer attacked Gersh on social media, claiming she was trying to extort money from his family. Anglin soon jumped into the fray, urging his readers to go after Gersh. Just make your opinions known. Anglin wrote, Tell them you are sickened by their Jew agenda. This is very important. Calling these people up and or sending them a quick message is very easy. It is very important that we make them feel the kind of pressure they are making us feel. And hey, if you're in the area, maybe you should stop by and tell her in person what you think of her actions. End quote. Daily Stormer readers sent a torrent of harassment at the Gersh family. One Twitter user sent a message to Gersh's 12-year-old son that read, Psst, kid, there's a free Xbox One inside this oven. The suit contends that Gersh has experienced serious and severe emotional and physical distress as a result of England's actions. However, the SPLC's goal runs deeper than simply making England pay out. David Dinelli, the group's lead attorney on the case, said the suit's ultimate aim is to prevent England from conducting harassment campaigns in the future. As an institution, as well as on behalf of Tanya Gersh, we would love it if whatever judgment we got was significant enough to cause Andrew Anglin to stop publishing his vile and hateful publication and stop targeting people. Dinelli said, he needs to be punished and he needs to be deterred, in addition to making compensation to the really significant harm his conduct has wrought upon Tanya Gersh and her family. Even after the lawsuit was filed in April, the Daily Stormer has repeatedly egged on harassment campaigns against other people who have drawn its ire. He encouraged his followers to troll Taylor Dumpson, the first black woman elected student government president at American University. In a post on the site, another writer urged readers to track down the families of CNN employees the call came after CNN wrote about the Reddit user with a long history of white supremacist posts 
who created the meme of President Donald Trump wrestling CNN. Andrew Anglin also targeted a Polish YouTube personality named Magdalena Pagowska, who posted videos about her interracial child. Dinelli said Anglin's failure to respond to the lawsuit is deeply revealing of the white supremacist character. There's irony in him being a big scary bully who is willing to take on anyone so long as he's hiding behind his keyboard, he said. Now he actually has the opportunity to finally come and defend himself and wrap himself in the First Amendment, and yet he doesn't have the guts to do so. You know, I wasn't going to, but I've reached the conclusion that over the next few weeks, I do need to read the legal briefs from the lawsuit that I recently defended myself in. It's go they'll be very factual webcast, and I'm just going to read the briefs as they're written, but people need to know what I've had to endure and what my family has had to endure at the hands of individuals attached directly to the political face and really the um, ruling elite of the pornographic industry. Um, tricky people. Real tricky. They're able to twist things quite well and they're able to make um, victims appear to be predators beautifully. <laughs>